Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one, I'll show you how I make this fabulous tear and share garlic bread recipe. It's a fantastic recipe to put in the middle of a buffet table with a small wheel of warm camembert or brie cheese for dipping. Absolutely delicious and very simple to make. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. OK, I'll start the recipe by making the dough. And I'll be using my stand mixer to do it, but you can easily knead this dough by hand too. And I'll explain why I'm using my machine a lot lately in a little while. As always, start by testing your yeast is working. Add one teaspoon of sugar to the lukewarm water. And give it a good mix until it's all dissolved. Then add the yeast. And give that a good mix too. Now set that aside in a nice warm spot for about 10 minutes. Right, time to mix the dry ingredients. I've already got the flour in a separate bowl. Now add the salt. Now add a little dried oregano. And you may know that as oregano. Next ingredient is one teaspoon of garlic granules. You can use garlic powder if you wish, but I find the granules have a stronger flavour. Using fresh garlic or garlic puree tends to make this dough very sticky and difficult to handle. So try to avoid those. Right, everything's ready. The yeast has frothed up, meaning it's very healthy. So I'll add it to the mixer bowl, followed by the oil. I'm using vegetable oil, but you can use olive oil or sunflower oil, rapeseed oil or even softened butter if you wish. And I'll add the dried ingredients on top of the liquid. OK, using your dough hook, bring the mixture together on the slowest speed. And this is the reason I'm using my machine a lot lately. The old arthritis in my right hand has been playing up for the last few months. I can knead for a little while, but certainly not for 10 minutes. So, if you haven't got a machine, but you're fit and well, you should be able to knead this dough for 10 minutes pretty easily. Right, enough about my ailments. Once the dough has come together, give the sides of the bowl a scrape down if you wish. and set your machine away on its slowest speed for 10 minutes. And this is what it looks like after 5 minutes. And this is what it should look like after the full 10 minutes. Nice and smooth. OK, you'll need to grease a bowl with a little oil. Now I'm using olive, but any oil will do. Turn out the dough onto a floured surface and form it into a ball as shown. Once that's done, clear the flour away and use the surface tension of the bench to stretch and tighten the outer skin of the dough ball. Now 
now get it into the greased bowl and swirl it around a little to pick up some of that oil. Cover the bowl, I like to use a shower cap for this, and get it into a warm spot for at least one hour for its first proof. I like to use my oven with just the light bulb on. Right, I'll set the timer for one hour. OK, that's the first proof done. And as you can see, it's about doubled in size. Now scrape it out onto the bench. I'm not using any flour this time, but if it makes you more comfortable, just sprinkle a little flour on the bench. Right, knock the dough back as shown. Now give it a stretch again. And get it back into the bowl. Right, for its second proof, give it 45 minutes this time. And I'd like to add, proofing times can vary depending on the temperature of your kitchen. If it's cold, it's going to take longer. OK, I'll set the timer for 45 minutes. To bake this recipe in, I like to use something quirky, like this non-stick frying pan. I think it looks really cool when placed in the middle of a dinner or buffet table. But use whatever vessel you have as long as it's around the same size. I know this is a non-stick pan, but for belt and braces I always like to grease the vessel too. OK, that's the second proof done. Time to make these little rolls. Turn out the dough onto a non-floured surface, but sprinkle a little flour close by to put the little rolls on once they're done. First, knock the dough back. That simply means push all the gas out of it. Right, now these need to be exactly the same size, so you do need your digital scales for this. And if your measurements were correct at the start, you should be around 670 grams. That's 23 and a half ounces. But try to use grams for this. It's much easier to use grams for this recipe. Now I need 16 rolls for this. So 670 grams divided by 16 is approximately 42 grams each. If you were doing that in ounces, 1.688 ounces. Do yourself a favour and switch your scales over to grams. So I'll divide this dough into 16 pieces first. Next, roll each piece into a ball. You must use a non-floured surface for this or they'll just slide around. I'll show you one more. Start by pressing down fairly hard with the palm until you get it going. Then gradually ease off the pressure. Most bakers like to use this claw action. But I prefer this forefinger and thumb technique. It's all about practice. OK, once all of the balls are formed, place them in the pan. This size pan is perfect for 10 around the edge, then 5, and that leaves 1 for the middle. And that's why I need 16. Arrange them as you go, leaving a good space in between. Remember, these will be about triple the size when they're finished. Right, we're getting there. I know this video is a bit longer than my normal ones, but it's not that it's all that difficult. There's just quite a bit to explain. Now cover with a lightweight dry cloth and get them into a warm spot for 30 minutes. 
One other thing, make sure that the pan you're using is oven proof. For this recipe we need an egg wash for the top of the rolls. If you don't use eggs you can brush with milk. Break your small egg into a bowl and add a tiny amount of milk as shown. And whisk thoroughly until the mixture is loose almost like water. It'll brush much more evenly like that. Right I'll set that aside for now. OK, the 30 minutes are up and it's time to prepare them for baking. OK, before going any further, preheat your oven to 190 Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5. And as I want this bread to have a soft crust, I won't be putting any steam in the oven. OK, you can see the rolls have risen nicely. And the pattern is very even and symmetrically pleasing to the eye. First job is to brush on the egg wash. And to prevent the wash from sticking to the sides of the pan when baking, try to keep the egg wash a little shy of the edge of the rolls. Try to be as gentle as possible with the pastry brush. Next is a little sprinkle of that dried oregano. And now I'll add a few grains of this coarse sea salt. And I'll finish off with some freshly ground black pepper. And that's about it for the topping. And now I'll get it into the preheated oven. Okay it's in so I'll set the timer for 25 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Okay we're halfway through the baking. And I like to stop the timer and give the rolls another coat of the egg wash, especially in the white gaps in between the rolls. Right, I'll get it back in and restart the timer. And that's it. Time's up, so I'll get it out and onto a wire rack to cool. Don't forget to put a white rag on the handle. This safety measure is always used in commercial kitchens, so you don't forget yourself or anyone else coming along and picking it up. One last thing I like to do while it's still hot is to brush a little of my homemade garlic and chilli oil all over the surface of the rolls. It gives the finished rolls a wonderful garlic and chilli kick and a lovely shine. All this is is a few cloves of garlic and chilies chopped fine with a few whole peppercorns and covered in olive oil in an old jam jar and after a few weeks it packs a great garlic and chilli kick. OK, it's been around 15 minutes since it came out of the oven, so I'll give it a little taste. And the best thing to do with this, as the name implies, is to just tear a chunk off. The texture is soft and airy. And if you think the smell of ordinary bread is great, wait until you get a nose full of this one. Right, I'll have a dip in this warm camembert and have a taste. And honestly, this is truly delicious. 
And if you do make it for a party or a buffet, make sure you make two, because I'm telling you now, it'll be the first thing to disappear from the table. And I guarantee it'll get a big thumbs up from everyone. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are The Kitten's Mummy, James Roddingray, Sam Harrison, Oliver Gooden, Liam Giblin, Roberto Arvelo Galindo, Shani Pond Soup Sing, Ethan Scrumbulous, Bronte Payne, How the Dosage is Made, J.R. Brassington, John Spittery, and Sandra Oss. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. And also, I'd like to give a special shout out to Claire and Kyle Brueggemann from Brueggemann Works for sending me this stunning cutting board. I'm sure you'll see it in lots of my videos. Thanks very much, guys. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.